This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at solids, and we're going to examine the ratio between lengths and uh, volumes with similar figures. So in our first section, we're going to look at the definition and kind of explain how the mathematics works. And then in the following two sections, we'll do some examples. All right, let's check it out. So let's start with the term similar. What are solids that are similar? What do they look like? So if you took two solids and one was the shrunken version of the other or one was the enlarged version of the other, we would say that they're similar because their lengths are all in the same proportion. It's like taking a photo, this is a two-dimensional uh, analogy, but if you take a photo and you enlarge it, all the distances are expanded by the same uh, fraction or the same ratio. Uh, this um, relationship that you see up there in the top left, that tells us the relationship between lengths and volumes with similar figures. And uh, we'll use it to you actually do some volumes problems in a second. But um, you have to remember that there's a cube here. Um, and that cube is kind of important. Uh, some people get it confused with squares. Just remember that area, we think of square units. In volume, we think of cubes. So that's why I put the graphic organizer in the top right, because volume represents cubes, because that's what you're really counting, cubes. And in mathematics, when we think of cubes, we really do think third power. Okay, so power three. So that's where that relationship comes from. All right. Well, I tell you what, let's put it all together in a problem, see how it all works. So you'll notice these two cones here um, that I put up on the screen, they are similar. And you can kind of, well, I'm telling you they're similar, but visually you could tell they're similar because the right cone looks like it's the shrunken version of the other. They have the same proportions, visually speaking, when you just do an inspection on it. And you'd say, okay, if we assume that they are indeed mathematically similar and that all the uh, sides have been shrunken down by the same ratio, then we can do this relationship that we're going to work on. So um, the way you set this up is you take the ratio of one length to the other. And for this particular problem, I'm going to use the small height to the large height. Okay, so if I take that ratio and I cube it, why cube? Because I'm, I'm going to be dealing with volumes and that is the connection between the ratio of lengths with the ratio of volumes. Okay, well if I reduce the inside, it's one half, and then if I cube that, you get one eighth. Okay, what does that mean? It means that even though we shrank this height by half, that's what this represents, the volume for the small cone is actually one-eighth the size. That's what that means, okay? So now that we know that this ratio is one-eighth, I'm gonna show you how to deal with that. So we take this one-eighth, and now we are going to determine the volume of the large figure. Well, we know the volume of the small figure, it's been given to us, is 37.7. Now the question is, where do we put it in this ratio? Since it is the small volume, I'm going to put it on top because that's where the small value is. See, the way I have this ratio set up, I have it set up small to big. So I'm going to put 37.7 right there, and I'm going to figure out what the volume is. How do I do that? I'm going to cross multiply. So you cross multiply, and I get V times 1, V, and I'm going to multiply 8 times 37.7, which I did a little bit earlier, so it's 301.6. And of course, never leave any numbers uh, without units. We're going to put some units on there, and we're talking about meters cubed. Meters cubed. There you go. So now I know what the volume of the large cone is. All right, let's move on to our second example. So for this problem, we're dealing with cylinders, but the math still works the same way. I'm gonna take the ratio of their lengths, nine to 12, 
um, I'm going to take this ratio and I'm going to actually they're not just any old lengths these are radii okay so I'm taking small to big small to big and I'm cubing why am I cubing because it's volume right for volume you cube that's our little bit our graphic organizer up there okay if I reduce this fraction I get uh, I get three fourths. If I take three fourths and cube it, I'm going to get 27 60 fourths. Okay, so that's the ratio of their volumes, which is not the same as the ratio of their lengths. Okay, so how do you deal with this? You now take the 27 over 64 and you set it equal to a new ratio. I'm going to put the 54 28. Notice it's the large cylinder. So I'm going to put it on the bottom because I have the big values in the bottom. So I'm going to put the 54, 28.7. Okay, so how do you solve this? You now solve a proportion. You cross multiply. So I take 64 times V. So I get 64 times V. And I multiply these guys, 27 times 54, 28.7. Okay, so what do you do next? Well, to get rid of the 64, you divide by 64. So I divide this side by 64. And once you do that, your answer is going to be, of course, I did this earlier, And never forget to put units. So this, of course, would be inches cubed because that's the, that's the unit that, I'm, uh, that I was given for volume. Okay, anyway, that is our answer. Now, please make sure to like this video. Please subscribe to this video. Make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out our interactive quizzes, our text-based lessons, and our instructional videos. I'd appreciate it, and you'll appreciate it too. Take care.